G'day Internet and welcome to River City Ransom Underground Underground. My name is Andrew Russell and I am the lead programmer on River City Ransom Underground. And in this series we're talking a little bit about some of the technical features in the River City Ransom Underground engine. So um, let's see, let's go to the desktop. Now, today we're going to finish off our series on um, physics and the physics system in River City Ransom Underground. And we're going to finish it off by talking a little bit about the stacking system. So let me show you what that looks like. So I've got the game up here and I'm going to spawn a bunch of crates into the level. Now what I can then do is I can have Alex go around and he can make um, stacks of these crates like so. And then what he can do is he can go down here to the bottom crate and he can pick it up and he can carry this stack of crates around like so. <clears throat> um, what we can also do is we can have Glenn come over here. In fact, Glenn, Glenn would like his own crate. Why not? why not? Why not a whole stack? Glenn would like a stack of crates as well. And Glenn can come over here and he can climb on top of this stack of crates. And Alex can come here and he can pick up the entire stack, including Glenn, and he can walk around and then while Alex is walking around, Glenn can walk around on top as well, and we can jump, and all of that good stuff. So, um, the way this works is that we keep track of uh, stacks of objects. So I'm going to turn on the uh, developer mode for this, and there we go. So this is showing the stack of crates uh, that's currently, um, currently being tracked. So every object... Um, in the stack, uh, the origin of objects is the bottom. So this arrow starts on this lower crate and it goes to this second crate. And then this second arrow is on this second crate and goes to the third one. And this third arrow here says that on top of this third crate, uh, Glenn is stacked. Now you'll notice there's no arrow from Glenn to this crate because, um, or Alex to this crate for that matter, because that's handled by the attachment system. So um, if I bring up attachment view, you can see all of the attachment points involved in um, in uh, <coughs> holding the crates. I'm going to turn the attachment view off. Uh, so there we go. And what I can then do is I can start spawning up some more crates. Um, didn't mean to put one there, but okay. So I can put one here. Uh, do, do, do. I can put one here and I can start making um, branches in the stack like so and come all the way off to the side like this. I can make I can make very large stacks coming up here and coming over here and they all just work so Alex can still walk around with his enormous stack of crates. We can put it down, can pick it up. So that's how, uh, that's how stacking looks in the engine. Let's go over to the whiteboard and have a little look at what that looks like uh, from a uh, sort of background position. Uh, there we go. So here's our whiteboard. And I have the old pen, everything's working. So, except I just cleared the thing. Here we go. So let's say we have a crate. Um, and as we discussed in the last episode, um, possibly, possibly that crate, uh, well, that, cr that crate is a moving object, so it's got a mover associated with it. So recall that the um, height map provides the sort of solid 3D area, uh, sort of the thing that we collide with, whereas the uh, green uh, box, that provides um, that provides the object that m can move around. So you saw in the previous episode, if uh, if that crate happened to be sitting on a conveyor region, and um, it, uh, the engine detected that the moving object here, the uh, green square, happened to be overlapping the conveyor region um, at the start of the frame, every frame it would get a little movement this way. Um, 
So let's get rid of that. So the stacking system works in a very similar way. So what happens to cause the movement to occur is if uh, you are on top of a crate like this, and they're both moving objects, um, like so, uh, what happens is at the start of the frame, so let's say, let's say this is, no, that's not very clean, let's, uh, let's say this is the frame we're looking at, and then, you know, there's a, there was a frame in the past, and then another frame, and there's going to be frames in the future, but this is the frame we're looking at here, it's this big middle one. So at the start of the frame, what we do is we register all of the physics objects. So that's where the um, arrows come in. So this arrow from here to here that says that uh, crate number one is underneath crate number two. So crate number two is stacked on top of crate number one. That arrow uh, gets determined at the start of the frame here. Then we run the simulation. So for instance, um, say this crate was in fact, let's say it's on a conveyor belt and it gets moved. Actually, that's not a very good example because the physics system is in charge of that. Uh, let's say that crate has been kicked. Let's Yeah, so it's, it's been kicked or been thrown. Um, and so it's got its own velocity. So it's flying off this way. Uh, which means that this frame, on during this frame, it gets a little movement here. So the crate number one gets a movement. And so it goes boom, that way. Then crate number two, nothing happens during the frame. There's, there's nothing interesting happens to crate number two. Uh, what I should point out is if... Um, if say we had a, a guy, um, uh, whoops. let's say we had a guy that was here and he was walking this way, he'd collide with these crates as they appeared at the start of the frame, because that's when we register all of our physics. So crate number one has moved. Then we get to the end of the frame and we say, right, let's look at our stacks. Let's look at this stack here. And we say, okay, at the start of the frame, crate number one was here, and now it's here. So it's moved um, by, you know, by this much. Crate number one has moved that much. What we do is then walk down this tree of um, objects, and then we say, right, well, it moved that much. Um, let's apply that same movement here. So the end result is that when, you know, crate number one gets kicked or carried, like if there's a guy under here carrying that crate around, when crate number one gets moved around, crate number two will naturally follow along. And if we have a whole lot of, um, uh, it doesn't, doesn't even have to, on the very top of the stack, because nothing else stacks on top of them, if we have a whole lot of other objects, that are in the stack, and I mean, uh, we, we could make one of them, oops, we could make one of them a solid object as well, because uh, why not? Um, so if this object in the stack was like that, and then we have another object on with that, the tree would look like this. We have one coming up here, and we'd have another one coming here. And what would happen is at the end of the frame here, one would put its motion onto two and then say two had its own motion it would then uh, get added to this vector here and get applied to here and to here and to here and to here and then it would carry on to here so all of the objects in the stack would get the same motion applied um, so what's what's also interesting to talk about here is that um say we have a guy that is stacked on top of this crate. So uh, the simulation looks like this. And whoops, that's not a very neat rectangle. So 
say that this um, this got some motion there what would happen is this is stacked um, what happens then is say this guy jumps so he is getting his own motion that way when we get to the end of the frame this crate has moved um, by this much and this guy's actually jumped off the crate so he's no longer in contact so at the end of the frame here before we resolve stacking uh, the situation looks like this we've got uh, let's do it in 2d we have I'll do it very neatly in 2d we have the crate here and we have the guy he has jumped off the crate and he's here so what do we do we still apply the uh, motion and the reason we apply this motion here and the reason is you know this is one frame this is like one um, time step so it doesn't really make sense like you can ask the question did um, did this guy jump first before the like yeah did, did the guy jump before the crate moved or did the crate move and then the guy jumped off and it doesn't really make sense because it all happens in this one time step so it sort of all happens simultaneously so it makes perfect sense to say that we apply uh, that this motion that we apply here to get to this point so we've arrived there and this guy's jumped off so he has gone um, there whoops other way so he's jumped up so he's gone there it's then perfectly sensible to still apply at the end of the frame to go right well that was stacked at the start of the frame so we then apply a little bit more motion here we copy that motion up and so in the end uh, we'll do it in orange this guy here gets all of that motion by the end of the frame and that still makes physical sense um, and there's one last thing to talk about and that is uh, very briefly that uh, this sort of tree that we have here starting here and we branch out and branch 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 that tree is also used for um, level transitions so if I were to head on back into the game um, let's see oh god we have a huge stack of objects well let's see if this works let's then then can stay on the level so we don't um, actually transition levels because you know I I'm using this level but I don't want to bring in another level because it's basically spoilers so first of all um, yeah I wonder if we can actually scrape some crates off by trying to exit here yeah <laughs> so uh, what can happen is that when we have a stack you can still um, collide objects on the stack with the rest of the world but anyway so we've scraped off a whole bunch of crates basically but we've still got our stack and what happens if we can leave the level and come back on and the entire stack comes with us uh, and that even works if uh, if uh, Glenn is on it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do this without walking off the level because I kind of don't want to spoil any other any other stuff in the game but um, so we can take Glenn and Alex off um, never mind <laughs> Um, okay, so yes, that is uh, the end of this episode. So uh, hopefully, all of uh, all of this made sense. In the next episode, we'll come back and we'll talk about something other than physics. Uh, so I will see you then. Thank you for watching. And oh yes, always, always remember to forget uh, looking around my microphone for this thing. Um, if you'd like to see future videos, go to andrewrussell.net. Uh, I'll post it to my blog. Go to at underscore Andrew Russell on Twitter, uh, and I will post these videos onto my Twitter feed. You can also follow at River City Ransom on Twitter. These uh, videos get retweeted. You can see here that they've been retweeted um, by the official account. And also, uh, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, where you're probably already watching this video. So. Uh, these videos will show up here if you'd like to see more of them. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.